In this video, I'll be explaining how I built this sliding barn door TV stand. So as most of these projects do, started out with a quick trip to Home Depot, got some three quarter inch birch plywood and crammed it into my car. Also working with some two by for the top. Um, there's a one quarter inch plywood sheet for the back and some one by fours for the framing. After I broke down the three quarter inch plywood, the first step was to cut it to size and then add the fake shiplap look. I accomplished the fake shiplap look by just using the table saw here. As you can see, I have a sheet, I believe this is the one of the barn doors, and I'm just making cuts. Uh, these are about a quarter of an inch deep into the three quarter inch plywood, and then spaced out, I believe it's five and a half or six inches apart to get that uh, panel look that I was going for. Next step was to sand all the little grooves. There was a little bit of splintering, um, not much, thankfully, because I had a pretty sharp saw blade, but sanding in all those grooves to make sure nothing caught on it, and I'm going to be painting it later too, so I want to make sure the paint spread evenly. One of the most difficult cuts in this project was the large bottom piece. Because it's so big and I just have a smaller table saw, you can see I'm using a utility table on the left, uh, left of the saw that is, and spacing it out accordingly. I could have used a circular saw, but the blade thickness on my circular saw is not as thick as the table saw, so I wanted to use the table saw. That's what everything looks like um, as I'm beginning to assemble it. You can see the shiplap look um, building the sides, and then I used just 2 by 4 construction lumber to support those. I glued everything and then used a brad nailer as well as the clamps to help out with that. Um, there's some pocket holes in there in the 2 by 4s made sure everything was square. I made sure the top was nice and flat with a level, then got started on the barn doors. Uh, that's one by four trim pieces glued and nailed onto that three quarter inch plywood. And I filled the holes with some putty and sanded it smooth. This is the face frame or the frame of the front of the actual unit. Um, you can see I am clamping it here to dry fit it. Um, just screwed it together with pocket holes. It went together really nicely. This is again the one by four material for the trim. It's actually a pretty simple build once you have everything planned out. I went ahead and added a little trim piece on the front to make the shelves look a little bit more finished and made sure it lined up. Uh, this is a shot of the side of the door, the sliding door. You can see the three quarter inch plywood has some gaps and then the gaps from the shiplap. I just used a putty uh, or like a wall mud you would use on drywall to fill that and then sanded it to make it look a little bit better. Uh, next step was to lay a base coat of this espresso paint uh, because I'm going to be going for that washed or weathered look um, painting over top of this. So everything gets the espresso paint, including the very back panel piece here. This is the one quarter inch plywood and then the doors as well, the sliding barn doors. Uh, I did the back as well, just in case anything was showing through. Next step is to do the top coat. Uh, customer wanted a cream. It's sort of like an off-white uh, color, and I'm using the Wagner Flexio spray painter here. Uh, you can see the extension cord dragging around. Got to make sure that doesn't drag onto the wet paint, of course. Um, it's pretty simple. I made a mistake by not laying anything down on the ground, and now my garage has white spray paint, or like this cream-colored spray paint splattered all over the floor so not the end of the world i definitely want to cover off your painting area because i got that little brown table to the left covered there too this is what it looks like at night as the first coat is drying i went ahead and did a second coat as well here it is with the top with the espresso paint base coat and now with the top coat of that cream color this is uh, two coats on all of it i believe and here it is just uh the, the doors resting against it trying to figure out where the rail will go for the sliding barn door Clamps are going to be your friend here, so make sure you dry fit everything first before you commit. Um, here it is with the doors attached, and now we're going to go back. Uh, this is actually assembling the top. This is actually just kiln dried lumber from Home Depot. Uh, this is a two by material, I believe it's a two by eight material, and I'm gluing it together so it's the correct thickness. I've already jointed and cut with a table saw to length so it goes together seamlessly. If you don't have a jointer, 
There are ways to make sure it fits together perfectly that I will not review in this video. There's plenty of videos on YouTube. Uh, next step is to get everything sanded. This was definitely the longest part of the whole project, getting everything sanded smooth. This is the part that the actual TV is going to sit on and will be most visible. So I want to make sure that seam really disappears um, or at the very least is smooth. I highly recommend investing in some kind of um, breathing or face mask protection for it when sanding. Next up is to fill the holes. This is a CA glue with some accelerator I sprayed on here. Those little black dots are filling holes. It's not super necessary. Um, little OCD maybe about that and just wanted to look really good for the customer. Uh, it's all being painted, so it's not really going to be too visible anyway. And it's they want a distress list, so I probably didn't need to do that step, but use the random orbit sander to sand a little bit more and then went around with the trim router um, to do a little round over profile. I uh, dropped the round over bit a little bit lower so it gave that little lip and I think it made it look really, really nice. Flipped the board around uh, and clamped it to my workbench and hit the other side and then sanded everything smooth. This is what that profile looks like and really happy with the way that turned out. Makes it look a little bit uh, more professional, I think. Next step is to give it that distressed look. I'm using the random orbit sander again here and using a 80 grit sandpaper. I was pretty nervous about this. It's a latex paint, so I didn't want it to, to peel off. So I was pretty cautious as I was doing this and probably took way longer than I, I needed to. But uh, the end result looked uh, really good and the customer really happy with it. So if the customer's happy, then I'm happy. I'm basically just holding the sander in one spot until it peels away some of the paint. Um, and then it gives this distressed look. So here's the final product. Uh, thank you so much for watching. If you are not already, please subscribe. Uh, like this video, feel free to ask me any questions, and God bless.